Meeting starts. We have some housekeeping details. And speaking is the chairman of the board, Doug Fuller. And thank you for joining the Warshaw County Road Commission for our June 16th virtual board meeting. If you, number one, if you would like to make public comments during this meeting, we will prompt you at the appropriate time in the agenda to virtually raise your hand. If you are viewing the meeting on your computer, first make sure to click join audio. You can then raise your hand virtually by clicking the participants button at the bottom of your screen and then the raise hand, raise hand button at the bottom right of your screen. If you dialed into the meeting from a touchtone phone, you can ra virtually raise your hand by pressing star nine. Once we get to the public comment section on the agenda, we will unmute participants with raised hands one at a time. The number two, the chat feature on this Zoom meeting is available only as a technical support for users on their computer or smartphone. If you are experiencing technical issues with audio or video during the meeting, submit a comment in the chat feature and our systems administrator will help you troubleshoot. The audio and video of this meeting is being recorded. A link to the video will be posted to wcroads.org in the coming days. Today's meeting agenda is posted on wcroads.org and there is a link available in the chat if you are joining us from your computer. I will now call the meeting to order and proceed with a roll call to make sure we're all here since we can't visually glance up and see that. Um, Vice Chair Barb Fuller. Present. Um, Commissioner Rod Green. Here. Commissioner Gloria Yamas. Present. Commissioner Joanne McCullough. Present. Thank you. Um, Managing Director Cheryl. Here. County Highway Engineer Matt McDonald. Here. Jack Donnell, excuse me. Thank you. Director of Operations Jim Harmon. Present. Director of Finance and IT Dan Ackerman. Here. Thank you. I'm going to ask for a moment of silence in a moment. It is our standard practice to begin our board meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. Since we are hosting this meeting virtually today, instead of the recitation of the pledge, we will start this meeting with a moment of silence to honor all those people helping to battle the virus and for those who have been killed by this terrible disease. Thank you. Um, at this point, we need an agenda. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda as it's presented? Mr. Chairman, I move that the Mr. agenda Chairman, be approved as presented. I'm sorry. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded. Um, well, that requires a roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Fuller, as in Barb. Yes. Commissioner Green, as in Rod. Yes. Commissioner Gloria Yamas. Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum. Yes. And Doug Fuller votes yes as well. So we have an agenda. Um, we have one set of board meetings to consider today, uh, which starts on page one in your uh, booklets um, for the meeting of June the 2nd, 2020 which was also a virtual meeting. Uh, could I have a motion on the acceptance of those minutes, please? I move acceptance of the minutes of June 2nd, 2020 as presented. I support. Second. Thank you, been moved and supported. Um, again, I need a roll call vote. Uh, 
Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Yes. Commissioner M Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Doug Fuller votes yes as well. So we now have accepted the minutes of June the 2nd. At this point, uh, we're going to digress from our usual line of agendas. We have a 25th year anniversary recognition for, as it happens, our Director of Operations, James Carmen. <laughs> um, and at the Washtenaw County Road Commission, we realize that our employees are our greatest asset. And we are delighted to honor Jim Harmon's dedicated service and commitment to this organization. Jim started his road commission career as a civil engineer, departing to pursue his master's degree, returning a year and a half later. In November, 1999, after his return, Jim was promoted to the permits supervisor and then promoted to the assistant director of engineering in February of 2003. Jim then changed departments with a promotion to the director of operations in July 2007, the role in which he currently serves. Jim directs the operational aspect, aspects of the Washtenaw County Road Commission, including road and highway maintenance, buildings and ground maintenance, and equipment maintenance. Jim is a valued member of our senior management team and his continued contributions are vital for the Road Commission to continue to be successful in meeting our stated mission, vision, and guiding principles. Jim, in a pro in appreciation for your 25 years of service as the Director of Operations, Assistant Director of Engineering, Permit Supervisor, and Civil Engineer, we present to you, Jim, this gift to say thank you for your hard work and dedication. Um, rarely have I had greater pleasure personally in reading the recognition of service uh, um, as much as I've enjoyed this one today. Jim, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there commissioners who would like to comment? Yes, I tried to clap virtually and I don't think it happened. So, woohoo, Jim! <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Jim. I'm sorry. Job well done. You're a valued person. You have a wealth of knowledge and your expertise is very much appreciated. Congratulations, Jim, and I look forward to working with you more. Made it. 25 years ago as a fresh off the press engineer, I, I couldn't imagine this moment. It seems so distant, so far away. And here we are, time travel or moved so quickly. And uh, it has been my privilege to serve the Washtenaw County Road Commission for the last quarter of a century, um, just delighted. And especially in my current role as Director of Operations since 07, um, that has been the highlight of my professional um, experience. And uh, my longevity, my success is, is due to the support of so many, so many that, that uh, there just isn't enough time to recognize. But I do wanna particularly recognize um, our leadership team and our operations department, our superintendents, both of them, all of our foremen, um, our group leaders, our equipment maintenance supervisor, uh, stockroom supervisor, facilities supervisor, and also our operations engineer and our operations clerk. All of these exemplary individuals have helped make my current role successful. And I, I honestly believe my best years are in front of me. So I um, appreciate the recognition and honor and um, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, give special thanks to my family. Um, yeah, who's online, Jim? Someone's congratulating dad. I believe that he has both his daughters and it looks like hopefully the remainder of his family there. That was Heather. Um, uh, uh, different names coming across it. Wonderful, yeah, yes. 
if I'll I get it. My, my, my. I'll, I'll, I'll get it out. But it's uh, uh, <laughs> my, the my, my son, Matthew, my daughters, Holly and Heather, and uh, my wife of 20, 29 years, Kathy. Yeah. Thank you. If I may add, um, I have had the pleasure of working with Jim for my entire career at the Road Commission. And having watched how Washtenaw County in general has grown, and specifically the Washtenaw County Road Commission, um, every area that Jim has worked in, he has um, brought incredible passion um, to the position. Um, I think back to uh, when we were in sort of the throes of development in the early 2000s and um, the tremendous growth that was taking place and what Jim was able to accomplish um, working through the development process and working out road improvement agreements um, and, and we truly all of us who on the roads in Washtenaw County benefit from what he was able to accomplish. And really it's the, the process that he put into place that we follow today um, as we continue to, 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 to try to improve and keep up with the different developments that are coming in. Um, when he moved over into operations, he took that same um, passion and desire to improve things with him. Um, and he has certainly led the operations department um, since that point in time and has taken what was a good department and has just made it um, better and better every day. I know he has the support of a lot of people, his family um, and all his work family as well in doing so. Um, but it's really his drive that has helped make this organization a better place. Thank you all for the honor and the recognition. I greatly appreciate it. Congratulations, Jim. What's the gift, Doug, that you, you have? Oh, I've, I have no idea. That's self-selection. Uh, oh, all right. Have fun with that, Jim. Thank you. It, it was considerably short of a new Bentley. <laughs> okay, moving on with that. Um, we need to next uh, deal with public comment. And if you would like to make a public com comment, please virtually raise your hand now. If you are viewing the meeting on your computer, first make sure to click join audio. You can then raise your hand virtually by clicking the participants button at the bottom of your screen and then the raised hand button at the bottom right of your screen. If you dialed into the meeting from your touchstone phone, you may virtually raise your hand at this point by, star, by dialing star nine. The meeting host will unmute participants who, with raised hands one at a time. The host will announce your username or the last four digits of your phone number when it is your turn to speak. As with all of our meetings, while this is a time to receive comments from to receive comments from the public. This is not intended to be a period for dialogue. Each person will be allocated three minutes to address the board. Emily, do we have people that have raised their hand at this point? No one has raised their hand at this point, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move on to written communications, which starts on page, I believe, 12 in your booklets. Um, I personally didn't have anything that riveted my attention, but I'm perfectly willing to have other commissioners comment on whatever they'd like to in the written communications at this point. I have no comments. Rod? No comment. Gloria? No comment. That's, thank you. Joanne? Uh, the work that was done on Tyler Road was beautiful. Fantastic. It was fast and um, it looks good. Oh, the repaving. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, I think that's one of these, right? Um, I didn't notice a written comment about that, but the, the oh, comment. Oh, I see what you're saying. Written. Oh, I'm sorry. It, 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 and that's fine. Your, your comment is well taken. Um, so um, we have, I got to turn the page here. 
Um, we now have uh, a place for staff and commissioners to follow up on public comment. And since there wasn't any, we'll go on to the new business. And I'd like to have a motion at this point on the consent agenda, please. Mr. Chairman, I'm over adoption of the consent agenda for items one through six as presented. So moved, or I'm sorry, second. That's fine, second or support works just fine with me. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Um, at this point, I'd like to, of course, we have to have a uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Barbara Fuller. Yes. Commissioner Rod Green. Yes. Commissioner Gloria Yamas. Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCullough. Yes. And Doug Fuller votes yes as well. Thank you. Um, then we have uh, an action item which requires us to vote. Um, let me turn. The ballot is on page 47. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, was, I would have gotten there. I had actually gotten the 49. Um, we need to vote for two members of the uh, Board of Directors for the Michigan County Road Commission self-insurance pool. This is the pool that Alan was referring to during the working session. We have three people that have put their names forward. Lester Livermore, uh, who is the current serving vice chair of that board, uh, from, and he is the chairman of the Mackinac County Road Commission. Brett Laughlin, who is a serving member of that board, and he is the managing director of the Ottawa County Road Commission. And we have Jeff Moffitt um, from the Van Buren County Road Commission. Um, since I serve on that board, I know two of these three gentlemen, and I have met Mr. Moffitt, um, and I have no objection, but I heartily recommend that we vote for Mr. Livermore and Mr. Laughlin. They're both very effective board members. They have the full confidence of the rest of the board. Um, and I would entertain a motion that favored that, or I'll make it myself if you'd rather. Uh, so moved. So moved. Four. Is there a second? Second. Uh, did you second that? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, those in favor of the, of supporting Mr. Livermore and Mr. Laughlin will vote by roll call again. Commissioner Barb Fuller? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. C Commissioner, Commissioner Gloria Yamas? Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Doug Fuller votes yes as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, moving on from the action items, uh, we'll come to reports. Uh, do we have a, any county commissioners with us, Emily? Commissioner Schink is on the line. Uh, Commissioner, I will unmute you. Commissioner Schenk, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you. I am, um, okay, I have my technology all figured out. Thank you. My only report today is that the county, Washtenaw County generally, Oh, reopened yesterday. Um, many services had continued throughout the closure, but now all of our services should be available um, with the social distancing measures. Okay. Veterans Thank you. Affairs as well? I believe so. I'd have to go back and double check. That's quite all right. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I, have, I have a question. Please. Are masks being required for people entering our buildings? We are requiring masks and we have masks available for those who don't have their own. But it is a requirement for being in the buildings. Yes. If, it, it's more complicated for the workers once they're in their space. If they are not within six, feet of people, I believe they don't have to wear a mask all day, but for customers coming in, it is required. And Thank everybody's you. been provided with several masks and a lot of hand sanitizer. And then depending on their job, they may have been provided with other personal protection equipment. Thank you. You're welcome. So is it 
um, so employees, once they're in their own space, they don't have to wear it, but once they move around, they must put it back on. Move That's around. my understanding. Okay. Thank you. That Welcome. matches our expectations in our, in the road commission buildings as well. And I'm sure Cheryl has throughout this entire evolution been very mindful of making sure that unless there's some horrible discrepancy that we match the count the county's recommendations exactly so thank you commissioner you're welcome uh, thank you commissioner barb fuller got something for us yes yes i do um i attended the june 9th 2020 parks and recreation commission's regular meeting uh, there was a great deal of public comment regarding the Jack Smiley Preserve, which is in Superior Township. There is a wetland mitigation project being proposed by a for-profit company. A great deal of public concern regarding that project taking place on public property. And as I understand it, and Commissioner Schenck, correct me if I misunderstood, that the Parks and Recreation Commission really has no authority beyond its enforcement of the um, easement that we hold. We can't stop this project. We can't put demands on the, the private entity doing it. That would be up to the uh, Eagle, right? Department of Environmental, oh, help me. I don't, used to be the DEQ. I don't know whether it is uh, anymore or not. Yeah, right, um, yeah. But there's a, a real limitation on what the Parks and Recreation Commission can do. Um, so the, uh, the public will need to pursue that in whatever way they see fit. Did I get that right, Commissioner? Yes, Commissioner. Thank you, thank you. Um, updates regarding the Stabler Farm County Park Project out on uh, Plymouth Ann Arbor Road. The design has been modified to make it an all electric facility for um, a multi purpose building that's proposed for that site in an effort to achieve carbon uh, neutrality there. I will make note that the price tag now for that multi purpose building is $3.2 million. Uh, the summer camps that I reported last time were being canceled have now been reinvented to the best of staff's ability to accommodate COVID-19 guidelines. The activities will be largely virtual in nature. Uh, food distribution in conjunction with food gatherers has remained a priority and we're doing everything we can to make sure that um, particularly the kids that were relying on summer camps for nourishment will still have a way to receive that. There's a preserve, a highland preserve in Superior Township. Uh, the township requested a utility easement. They want to relocate a Clark Road sanitary pump station. Uh, and we agreed to grant them that request. Uh, the East Side Recreation Summer Programs that the Parks and Recreation Commission has supported the previous three years. We've now renewed that commitment for 2020, 2021, and 22. And what that actually entails is $10,000 each, each year for three years to support the activities of uh, the Rutherford Pool, the Park Ridge Community Center, and the Ypsilanti Senior Center. Um, and lastly, I want the rest of the commission to know and the public as well that I've been appointed to SEMCOG's Legislative Policy Committee. That concludes my report. Question? I don't have a question. I just want to congratulate you, Bart, for being uh, appointed to the SEMCOG Legislative Board. Yes. Thank you. I hope we have a chance to talk. Yeah. Also joining that congratulations, Commissioner Fuller. Best wishes to you. Thank yes. you. Congratulations. Thanks. I'm relying on everybody to keep me up to speed on things I should know. Okay. Okay. I'll offer my congratulations as well. That is the, the uh, panel 
that was recently formed of which uh, Commissioner Morgan is the chair. Is that, have I got the right panel? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, you do. Question on your earlier report. I have, don't know where this physical location for this wetlands mitigation site is. You mentioned it, uh, you, you gave it a name, but I don't know where it is. Uh, it's the Highland Preserve in Superior Township. Uh, no, sorry, that was the... Yeah, I was gonna say that was a different name. No, Jack Smiley Preserve. Sue, can you help me with Crossroads on that one? I. I can't offhand. Um, I was thinking it was on Laferge, but I, I'm not positive. Okay. I can find that out. I just, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I believe it's near Prospect and Laforge. La, Prospect and Laforge? Okay. I believe it's in that area. Okay. Commissioner Green. Thank you. On Thursday at 8 o'clock a.m., I expect to attend the Roads Funding Subcommittee, which we will continue to talk about the upcoming election in August. And as well in, in the afternoon, I will be attending a general assembly meeting of SEMCOG. All of those by virtual meeting. And that's it. Okay. Um, Gloria? So I've been busy. I wanna thank uh, Cheryl for helping me with a lot of things on June 8th. I met with Cheryl to review the binder and so much information, but it was excellent to get uh, through that. On June 10th, I attended the Miller Road Project with uh, Aaron Burkholz, the senior project engineer, and Nate Murphy, and uh, it was great to see so much community participation in that, and it was uh, very educational. June 11th, I had a meeting with the director of engineering, Matt, which was also very illuminating. Thank you, Matt, I learned a lot. And June 11th, I uh, attended a seminar with SEMU webinar about what's new in assessment management, which was very educational in the assessment process and figuring out the complexities of all the funding of the Road Commission. Uh, June 15th, I met with Dan Ackerman and Cheryl again. Thank you, Dan, for all the information. All of it has been, you know, so much information and I it has helped me understand the whole process. So that is all of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Joanne? Uh, yes, I, I attended the um, June 10th uh, virtual meeting, Miller Road Bridge and Roundabout, <clears throat> and I thought it was very good. Um, I thought the roundabout, I think it's going to be beautiful. Um, you know, whoever put that together, that looks really good. Um, I also uh, attended a lot of orientations. Um, I can't, I didn't write them down, so I can't remember them all, but they're bringing me up to speed and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. Um, I'll comment on a couple of items. One was the virtual meeting about the roundabout that Joanne was just referring to. I thought that was very well done, both Nate and, uh, Aaron did a fine job. Um, we have certainly learned in this process that uh, virtual meetings uh, certainly are going to be part of our way forward over the next, let's say, decade. Because um, we had, uh, help me out here, Matt, how many people attended that particular virtual meeting? 30 some? Actually, it was. Over 50, I believe. Oh, okay, yeah, even better. 57. We set a, a new bar. 58, I believe. Yeah, um, it, it's, you know, I've gone to a, some number of meetings over the years that were project related. Very rare uh, that we ever had anything like 50 people. I would have said probably the meeting over at the Ypsilanti Township Fire Station over Harris Road Project was probably in that order of magnitude. Um, so we've learned a new tool here. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment on was, um, I'm still got reservations about it, but certainly I can report that the, uh, intersection improvements at Wagner and Ann Arbor Saline are effective. So, and that was 
purpose of, of you know, and it looks very nice, by the way, including uh, Mr. Uh, help me out here, the gentleman's name that has that house. That, Mr. Foley. Foley. Mr. Foley's house actually looks much neater than it ever has. So anyway, um, moving on from road commissioners to the managing director as a set of reports. Cheryl? Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you, Commissioner McCollum, uh, for the compliments on Tyler and Dorset. Um, I think what you were referring to was the media advisory that was sent out in advance of the paving. Um, we're pleased that most of that work was completed and Mark, Mike Birnbeck, who oversaw that project, was with us uh, earlier on the call. So hopefully he had an opportunity to hear that from you direct. Uh, we have a little bit of button up work to do, so we'll be back, but certainly not impacting traffic the way that we did the first time. So, um, but thank you, we'll pass that along if he didn't hear it himself. Um, included in your uh, board packets uh, on starting on page 50 is the staff report. If you have any questions on that, I'd be happy to entertain those. Um, also included in your reports um, are uh, two um, worksheets, and I'm going to uh, let Dan Ackerman get into a, a little bit more detail um, when he has an opportunity here. Um, one of them is um, a, a history of the, the premiums as well as the the, the discount, so to speak, that we have received from CRASIF. Um, and the other one is a history of um, the payments that we have made to um, McCRISIP. And you, you've been hearing a lot about McCRISIP and CRASIF, and I, I just want to, in a general sense, uh, give you a brief explanation of what those two are. Um, the Road Commission belongs to two uh, self-insurance pools. Um, the first one is McCRISIP. Um, and that one covers our general liability, auto liability, employment practices, any errors, errors and omissions um, on behalf of staff or the public officials, um, any property or physical damage. Uh, when Alan Philbrick was explaining earlier that he was doing some work um, representing us, but on behalf of the pool, that was through the self-insurance pool, that was through McCrisip. Um, I will ask that uh, Gail Cummings, who is the administrator for McCrisip, and actually um, our chair sits on the board for McCrisip, um, that Gail come and do a more detailed presentation on exactly um, what it means to be a member of McCrisip and the services that they provide. Um, but uh, to give you a little bit more detail on that, um, but I just wanted to explain that's what McCrisip is in a very general sense. Um, CRASIF is the County Road Association Self Insurance Fund. And that is very specifically associated with our workers' comp. And uh, so that's basically the difference between those two pools. You'll hear a lot about those two different terms. Um, and I will also arrange for the administrator um, of CRASIF to come in and again, give a little bit more um, detailed explanation of the services provided by them. Um, we're very lucky to belong to both of, of those um, pools. We've certainly done well by that over the years. Um, but in this world of acronyms, I just wanted um, to put that out there. And I'll let, like I said, I'll let Dan get into um, the details of that in, uh, in just a moment. The other thing that I just wanted to address real quick was um, the county road millage. Um, we continue uh, to uh, make headway on that. Uh, as Commissioner Green indicated, there is a roads funding subcommittee this coming Thursday uh, at eight o'clock in the morning. That is to bring that group up to date on the educational efforts that have taken place as well as the advocacy efforts that have been taking place. Uh, last night I did present to Ann Arbor City Council um, just an, uh, information on what exactly the renewal and restoration of the millage is with the proposed uh, next four years. Um, I have to admit that the presentation that I did was early on in the meeting and I did exit and at slightly over one after 1 a.m. this morning uh, the council did approve by a nine to two vote, a resolution in support of the county uh, road and non-motorized millage. So that was very good news. Um, I did not stick around to listen to that. That was quite late at night. Um, so that's, it's nice to have their support since we certainly know that the city of Ann Arbor and their support is critical um, to the millage efforts. Uh, and then tomorrow at 11, we also have a public information meeting. Um, it'll be very similar to the information that was presented to Ann Arbor City Council last night, um, but it'll be an opportunity to present that to the public and to have them ask questions so that we can certainly um, share um, any information or answer any questions that might exist with respect to the county road millage. So do you have any questions for me at this time? 
All right. Uh, since I already um, did a little bit of a brief introduction, Dan, would you like to uh, take it from here? Sure, no problem. Um, if everybody could look at page 58 in the board packet. Um, certainly there are a lot of questions concerning workers' compensation and our liability insurance. So we thought we would just have some information for the commissioners. Um, as Cheryl mentioned, we'll have a more in-depth conversation, but um, a lot of the questions were um, about our numbers. So on page 58, this is our workers' compensation history. Um, and I'll just briefly go through the columns. The payroll estimate is something that uh, the Road Commission determines each year and the billing um, comes off of the uh, payroll estimates. And um, we do our best to get as close as we can, but you know, we could have a severe winner or a mild winner and that could throw our numbers off. Um, so we do the best we can. Um, we are audited on that every year. So um, if we're too far out of line, Crasif may um, say, hey, could you sharpen your pencils a little bit? But usually we're, we're pretty close. Um, the manual premium, that's kind of figured off of the payroll estimate. Um, probably one of the most important columns. And by the way, before I started this, I should have uh, given credit to Human Resources because this is their spreadsheet. So credit where credit's due. I think this is a great spreadsheet. Um, so we talk a lot about the mod factor. So there are currently 69 road commissions that participate in workers' compensation in the pool. Um, if, if our experience is the same as the others or similar to it, on average, it would be at a one mod factor. If our experience is a little bit better, it would be below the, below the one or above. So if you see in 2017 and 2018, for the first time, this organization was actually below average at 0.85 and 0.83. Um, you know that, I know we're working really hard, the safety committee is trying to emphasize um, safety first, um, trying to have best practices, trying to learn from others. And um, you know, certainly in those two years in particular, uh, we were benefactors of that. And we actually um, received a discount for that. Um, Dan? Yes. Dan, you said in those years we were below average. Can you explain what you mean by below average so that we're not misled by that? Okay, so correct. Average. So our, our experience was actually better. Our experience was actually better than the average road commission. Is that a better way to put it? And so therefore, you're actually below one, and so you get a discount on what you pay for your, your workers' compensation. Is that a better? Sorry, not below average, but the, our experience was a little bit better than the average road commission. Thank so you. So we for had that we had fewer um, worker comp claims, or and fewer that's what drops us below one. They look at the number of claims and of course the dollars. There are outstanding claims that haven't been resolved, so they factor all of those in. Right. Um, so you can see in 17 and 18, if you look at the manual premium and the standard premium, there's actually a decrease there because of the fact that we're below a one. So um, that mod factor does impact what we pay from year to year. Um, the next column, the dividend premium discount, that was something that was discussed at the last board meeting. And so uh, that's something that all the participants of the pool receive based on uh, interest earnings, on if they can close out certain years, they, they have open years that uh, there's still remaining claims, if they can close those out, um, and if there's still some money left over, then that can go back to the pool. Each year we do receive a, a dividend uh, premium discount. And to Barb's question last week, what do we pay the net annual discounted premium? That is what the organization pays on an annual basis. So you can see for 2020, and keep in mind the CRASIF um, year is July through June. So they're a little bit different than us. Um, but for 2020, we, uh, we will be billed for $244,000. And then the last, the last column I really like is showing the mod factor when it's above one, how much additional we're having to pay, or if it's below, what sort of discount that we're getting factored in for having uh, better than average uh, workers' comp um, claims. So I don't know if there's any questions on this. Dan, Certainly, like Cheryl mentioned, we'll, we'll talk more in detail, but um, 
you know, here's all your numbers right here. Yeah, Dan, if I could, um, I think at the last board uh, meeting, Barb, you were asking some questions associated with payback or somehow giving back to the employees. Right. And, um, with this particular program um, for the, and specifically for the year, I believe it was 2017, it was the first time that our mod factor um, had gone below one. And so um, looking at that discount, or basically what we, uh, as an organization, we were able to realize um, in savings as a result of that mod factor dropping below one, um, that's when we um, put together where we uh, made some contribution to, um, I believe it was the pension um, on behalf of all the employees um, th that fund in order to um, basically thank the employees for taking um, such good care of themselves. And as a result, um, you know, it's a cost savings that was realized by all of us. And then the employees also received, I believe it was four hours of annual leave or vacation time to celebrate again, um, that they, they worked hard, very hard um, in order to make that happen. So um, it, it really had to do with that mod factor more than it had to do with the fact that the, the premium discount, which I think is what was actually what we were seeing last week. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so we, were, we rewarded the employees for bringing down the mod factor. We didn't just throw that into the general fund, actually put it back in to thank the employees for a job well done. A portion of it, yes. Yes. Right. And certainly our mod factor has increased, as you can see, it's above one. But if you look at say 2011, 2012, one, it was 1.4. So, you know, we've done a lot and, and you can see uh, staff's dedication to safety, bringing that from 1.4 and now we're at 1.02. So that's that, you know, again, we're getting close to below one. And, you know, there's been a lot of efforts by staff, um, all employees really to, um, you know, collectively do what we can to work smartly, work safely. You know, unfortunately, things do happen, and sometimes, you know, if you have an aging workforce, that, that could present other challenges, but you know, I think we're doing a really good job just having a focus on that, and, you know, besides the dollars, you know, you want your, your workforce to be as healthy as possible. Oh, Commissioner Green, I think you're muted. So the employees get rewarded for their safety efforts? Sounds like it. Right, that's what this was. The, 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 when we were below one, the attempt, we, the, the organization was rewarding the employees um, for the efforts in, 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 really they're the ones who helped bring that down below one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this workers' compensation spreadsheet? Okay, we'll go to the next page, 59. This is McCrisip. This is the liability insurance. Again, the, um, the things that Alan was uh, referring to as far as them uh, representing us, and it's for general liability for uh, property equipment uh, coverage is one. Um, so the, the, top, the top few rows is what we pay on an annual basis. We've got a 10 year history here. So you know, on average, it's a little over $500,000. And the bottom portion is refunds that we receive. And again, the refunds are based on interest earnings, on years where there may have been money in, in reserves for pending cases. When those cases get resolved and those years get closed out, then the members do receive some of that saving. Um, so you can see we've had some uh, nice um, refunds over the years as well. Probably averages a little over $250,000. Um, so, um, we've been we've been pretty happy as far as the uh, success of um, you know keeping the costs. You can see the cost too; um, they don't trend too high from year to year. There's some bumps here and there, um, and then the refunds have been significant most of the years that we've been participants. So you know, all in all, I think the the pool concept has been working pretty well. Um, and there are 76 road commissions that participate in the liability insurance pool. So I don't know if there's any questions. So we pay about $795,000 in insurance premiums. 
between the two, right? Yeah. For workers yep. comp and liability year. insurance, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions on this? And as Cheryl mentioned, oh, Gloria? Oh, you're muted. Gloria, we can't hear you. Okay, there I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, that's okay. So um, that 770 figure that Barb was talking about, that does uh, the total premium, does it, that takes into account the refunds that we've received? Correct, yep. Okay. Yes. Dan, if I can make one insertion, it's not a question, it's just an observation. Um, both of those pools are open to, well, let me rephrase that. The liability pool, the CRISP, is available only to road commissions. We, by our charter, we cannot insure agencies that are anything other than a road commission under Michigan law. We have lost some members when counties, for example, uh, take over a road commission, their insurance stops instantly. Um, and sometimes the counties have been aware of that, and sometimes they haven't. But nevertheless, McCrisp can only insure road commissions. Further, they can only insure road commissions that want to be members of the pool. So uh, there's a couple that have decided not to. So that would be my observation. And um, also participation in the pools, we're similar agencies, we do similar work. So that makes sense to participate in pools when you have similar risks and similar work activities. And both Crasif and McCrisif, they have uh, annual meetings, they do a lot with education and training. And, and really, I think they do a great job just um, as far as um, membership wide, what are the issues we're all facing and maybe trying to address that with specific uh, training. Um, but, you know, it, there, there's a lot of other benefits to um, participation in the pool besides just pooling the money together. Yeah, specifically, McCrisip has been very helpful in going through um, this whole COVID experience. They have sent out um, very relevant guidance in a very timely manner. I know Nicole and I have both appreciated the information that we have received as we have had to make different decisions. Um, and McCrisip really has been a, a, a huge resource during this time. So are there any other questions on either one of the uh, spreadsheets? Thank you for this information, Dan. I appreciate it. Yep, anytime. Dan, did you have anything else that you wanted to share? Um, just wanted to share, and I talked about this a little bit, but uh, Public Act 202, and that's um, the state of Michigan is requ had required a couple of years ago all governmental entities in the state of Michigan to report both pension and OPEB or other post-employment benefits. And um, they look at certain triggers to determine if an organization is in, in their minds underfunded. And uh, for pension, if your pension uh, funded ratio is below 60% and for OPEB, it's, if, if it's below 40%. So certainly we've been um, submitting that information each year uh, the first year we actually um, missed both of those targets. And then what we have to do is present an action plan or, or request a waiver that we would share with the board. And it's basically, how are we gonna get back to above those targets? Um, last year, our OPEB actually went above that. So we only had to submit a waiver for pension. Um, and this is due by the end of June. So I'll certainly be sharing more of this with the commissioners um, after I submit it, where our numbers are if we're potentially um, determined underfunded and then what um, plan of action we have to have to uh, move forward. But um, I know the state of Michigan um, has had some communications in particular with road commissions, but really all municipalities with the impacts of COVID and some of the fiscal challenges that those present. I think they're gonna be even more 
willing to accept these waivers um, because of some of the, the fiscal strain that, that these agencies are drawing on. So I don't know if there's any questions on that. Okay, like I said, more to come on that. Um, any other questions for me? Okay, well, thank you. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, Matt, would you like to bring us up to date on the engineering department? Sure. I just wanted to, again, congratulate Jim on his 25 years. He certainly made a lot of people successful, um, both inside the organization and outside, me included. Thank you for hiring me, Jim, many moons ago. So um, with that, I also want to point out on the consent agenda, uh, we had a resolution for retirement for John Posgay, who is a, our permits coordinator. He will be retiring uh, next Wednesday. And certainly we wish him well, and we will welcome him back when we um, once again gather together in person and uh, present him with his resolution and uh, wish him well. Um, he will have big shoes to fill for Mr. Posgay. He's been our permits coordinator for some time, and I've certainly learned a lot from him along the years. Um, with that, um, as our chair pointed out, the Ann Arbor Saline Road and Wagner Road intersection is open. And uh, we've got some punchless items, um, some signal work yet to be done at Pleasant Lake and Ann Arbor Saline. And so there'll be a minor work uh, yet to be done, uh, but for the most part is open to traffic. The signal was turned on and is functioning. And so uh, hope you get a chance to drive that. Um, one of the roads that we did close um, most recently was Pontiac Trail at Seven Mile. We talked about that this morning. That roundabout project is started. Uh, contractor is working towards um, making progress on removals and underground work uh, is the first thing to get started. So also uh, another project underway, um, making good progress is Carpenter Road. That's in Pittsfield Township. Uh, we're currently paving the outside lanes, um, the both northbound and southbound curb lanes of the five lane roadway have been milled and paved and we'll be moving traffic and then working on the other lanes uh, uh, here shortly. So that continues. Uh, today we are paving Prospect Road in Superior Township um, and that is part of our uh, federal aid program uh, the next road uh, that we'll be venturing to, I believe, is Jackson Road. So also uh, ne next week, uh, we anticipate the contractor uh, closing uh, Textile Road at Woodland. Uh, that's a roundabout project in partnership with uh, the city of Saline. And uh, so that's uh, set to get started next week. And then the Miller Road project, we're having a pre-construction meeting tomorrow. Um, it indications look as if the contractor will get started after the holiday. Um, so that's where we're at with that one. Any questions on any projects in general um, for the engineering department? Cavanaugh Lake Road. Yes, that's another one that's uh, set to get started after the holiday. Um, all the insurance paperwork is in place from the contractor and Amtrak? To my best of my knowledge, um, the, the railroad uh, has been particularly frustrating on this project. I know um, certainly we'll, we'll be checking in with them uh, in the coming weeks to make sure we are green lights to go. And uh, Nate Murphy is uh, certainly going to be checking in with both the contractor and the railroad to confirm the dates. Thank you. Um, so Matt, I, I did want to say that Pittsfield Carpenter Ellsworth Road project is looking great. It's making really good pro progress and I've been really impressed going through that intersection. I did have one question about the Miller Road pre-construction meeting. Um, you talked about the utility partners making sure that they're on schedule. Do you make sure of that or does uh, the construction uh, company that has the bid. You no, know, all that is coordinated through our uh, our permit activity. Uh, Mr. Posgay, who I mentioned, uh, is a big part of that. <clears throat> so our permits group 
and our project manager coordinates directly. And uh, there's currently uh, relocations underway. Uh, so the, all that work gets permitted and then inspected, ideally by the uh, inspector that's going to be uh, working to, with the contractor to build the improvements. So that is the case in, in, in Miller as well. Um, the focus really is around uh, the intersection because the roundabout's going first. Um, but yeah, there's, there's multiple relocations, AT&T being one of them, um, Michigan, or, uh, DT Gas, DT Electric, and uh, Comcast as well, so. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions for Matt? Um, I would like to um, uh, emphasize one of the things that Matt was talking about. Um, we do have Mr. Posgay, who's another one who has uh, been with us for quite some time um, and he is electing to retire. And while we certainly wish him well, it leaves a huge vacancy for us within our organization. Uh, and one of the things that we are proud of is that we, um, as much as possible, we do promote from within. So um, uh, whenever these um, wonderful events happen for our employees, um, we all also take a deep breath because we know the domino effect is about to start taking place. And so we're very pleased with the fact that um, Lauren Purdy who had um, previously uh, been with us as our permits clerk, um, has um, elected to um, now uh, become our a permits coordinator. So we will, uh, we have her working with John right now, trying to absorb as much as she can from the sponge before he walks out the door. Um, and uh, so she will be resuming that or taking over in, in that new role for her. And Lisa Jones, who is our customer relations representative, um, has now elected to move into the permits clerk position. So um, we have a lot of new people now who will be um, resuming or taking over new roles within our organization, but continuing employment with us. So we're proud of the fact that we afford them these opportunities. We think that that's wonderful, um, but it does sort of uh, in multiple areas. Now we're all taking the deep breath of, okay, now who's going what, where next? Um, so the current vacancy is with that uh, customer relations representative. And I know that Nicole and Alicia have been working very hard with Emily on going through um, the applicants and trying to set up interviews and hopefully we'll have that very important position um, that hole filled in the, the near future. Um, but thankfully, everybody's also very cooperative and continue to work with each other as we're sort of going through this process as well. So. Um, uh, just another opportunity to talk about how we handle some of those hiring and, and, and retention processes as well. Um, so uh, with that, I'd be happy to turn it over to Jim to talk about operations. Thanks, Cheryl. It has been a tremendous last two weeks. Uh, you can see in the staff report from pages 50 through 55, uh, a large amount of work, very diverse work was accomplished by the department, um, direct force and contracted. And we're knee deep in it now, uh, very exciting. Uh, the foremen have uh, taken hold of the local road program and uh, are performing drainage improvements, gravel resurfacing, limestone resurfacing, um, our contracted services ongoing with our, our asphalt pavement resurfacing. And Joanne appreciated your, your recognizing the recent improvements to Dorset and Tyler. We're delighted to have completed that. Um, so much better and um, that that was a county millage funded project so there's only a couple of things remaining there i think uh, a sidewalk ramp upgrade to make that compliant with the current american with disabilities act uh, possibly structure adjustment or some some lesser pavement markings but the substantive work is completed uh, moving forward we are uh, heavy into planning coordinating with our engineering department for really our keystone project, which is State Road Corridor, from the roundabout at Ellsworth all the way down to Old State uh, near the Walmart. Uh, that is a major project. That's really the culmination of the entire four-year millage. Uh, there was thoughts that that money might have been bundled with other possible funding sources to do a, a, a more extensive improvement along the corridor. That didn't bear fruit. Um, uh, despite tremendous effort by Matt and his group. Um, but that being said, we've, we were still able to partner with Pittsfield Township 
and do some enhancements to the original scope of the work. So uh, right now we're in planning mode and, and preparing here in, in a couple of weeks to begin, begin that work. So we're excited about that. Our chip seal program. This is just fundamental to preserving our asphalt pavement and extending the life of, of that considerable asset investment. Uh, heavily underway as of today, we'll probably have finished the chip sealing of phase one. Phase one are all the roads proximate to our main yard here on Zeb Road. And that's about 25 miles. And I think I reported to you last time, we've got a little over a hundred miles of, of chip sealing to do. We do that with direct force. Uh, we've got probably one of the best crews in the nation when it comes to chip seal. And I, I, I say that with absolute candor. They are amazing and they're working right now and I can hear them on the radio outside my office communicating as they uh, work to complete today's uh, efforts. Um, so far, so good. The work has been high quality. It's been productive. It's been efficient. It's been safe. And um, we have had a couple of complaints. Um, but we've had a lot of accolades and compliments as well. The complaints are usually related to the change from that nice smooth asphalt surface to now we've got all these rocks out there, the chips and it's coarser, but um, we, we, we take a little time, be patient with those comments and, and let them know we're following up with additional sweeping and we will be applying uh, what we call a fog seal. So we're painting the road black, uh, it really makes the pavement markings pop. It softens that coarser surface uh, and uh, things will be better at the conclusion of all this. So after today, um, we'll probably take about a week's break on the chip ceiling and do a considerable amount of sweeping of any loose stone and prepare the roads for the fog ceiling. And uh, that'll, that'll probably be the better part of next week is fog sealing phase one roads. Then we'll move to phase two, and phase two is a large uh, quantity of mileage up in the Chelsea area, the northwest part of the county, and working our way around the county in a counterclockwise direction. Um, and then just a report on the, on the gravel resurfacing. We've just got so many miles of unpaved roads in Washtenaw County, 750 miles, and um, there's an extraordinary amount of investment and care that has to go into keeping those roads in reasonable condition, both local and primary. Um, one of the primary roads is rural Manchester Township, uh, Wellwood Road. So it's really Wellwood and Sharon Hollow from US 12 over to the Jackson County line. Uh, district four, uh, under the leadership of Rourke Freeman, our district foreman down there, possibly today, if not tomorrow, will complete the uh, gravel resurfacing of that road. A significant investment, a road that a primary road has probably not seen an improvement like this in four decades. Uh, long overdue and there have been a lot of thumbs up, a lot of compliments from the residents, the motorists down there. So appreciative that the board um, has appropriated the funds to make the investment in that rural corner of our county. Um, and then at the same time, limestone resurfacing is occurring at this time in Sio Township under our local road agreement with with SIO, um, they're working on East Elhi. They finished the resurfacing of Craig Road off of Maple yesterday, and they're working on limestone resurfacing of East Elhi. So, tremendous amount of work going on. Uh, it's a big team of people that help make all this possible. So, uh, and that's all in spite of a, a terrible storm that went through and knocked down a lot of big trees in the west part of the county, uh, blocked a lot of roads, or. Uh, late night for District 4 and Day District 3 to clear all of those fallen trees from the roadway. Happy to answer any questions that the commissioners may have of me or the operations department. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. That's it from staff's perspective. Mr. Chairman, could I make a comment, please? Certainly you may. On pages 56 and 57, it's the communications report. And I'm never sure whose umbrella that falls under. But those were pretty impressive numbers in terms of the social media platform that Emily is overseeing in terms of emails, 18,618 emails sent out this month or in the past month. 
Uh, Facebook, we have 6,400 followers. And Twitter is a little bit further behind, but just over 1,500 followers. So it's, it's working. I mean, the social media efforts are reaching. I don't know how much overlap there is in all of that, but I think it demonstrates that through Emily's leadership and Cheryl and um, certainly Doug Fuller encouraging the hiring of a, um, a communications individual some years ago, we were poised to be talking to the community under this pandemic situation in a way that we never could have envisioned and uh, we were very fortunate to be prepared in this way to talk to the community. And they're listening. I mean, they're signing up. They're tuning in. So that's great. Thank you, Commissioner Fuller. Um, and one of the things that I would like to point out um, that Emily has educated me on over the years has been, it's not just the number of emails that you're sending out, um, probably of equal, if not greater importance, is your open rate. And mm -hmm. Do attempt to be very strategic in sending out those emails so that we're sending out what people want to hear and and that's evidenced by having a fairly high open rate. So we'd like to believe that the content that we're sending out is relevant. Yeah, over 7,000 of those emails were open. Yeah, as the report illustrates. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But that is all. Emily Kaiser um, with the assistance of Lisa Jones. And I know she works very closely with our different project managers and superintendents in order um, to gather all that information and to get it out. Um, but really uh, it's under Emily's leadership that, that we're seeing all of these efforts taking place. And I really appreciate the photographs that go out with the media advisories and the updates. I don't know who's taken the pictures. Roy Townsend used to be famous for that. Uh, but I don't know, Jim, Matt, who you've got out there with their cameras or the drone, but that really makes a huge difference in terms of, oh, that's looking great. Oh, that's where that is. So keep the pictures coming, too. Well, Alan Squire is our GIS specialist, and he is also the drone driver most of the, the drone pilot most of the time. So the drone footage is typically coming from Alan. Um, and we've told everyone within this organization that communication is part of their position, even if mm -hmm. it's under that other duties as so assigned, which we love so much. Um, most road commission staff have been given cell phones, which include a camera. So they have also been tasked with taking pictures um, as well. So we, we firmly believe that it is everybody's job to communicate. And then obviously, um, usually uh, Emily is the one who's corralling us in those efforts. Mm -hmm. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Been moved and supported. Um, again, we'll go through a uh, roll call vote. Uh, Barb Fuller? Yes. Rod Green? Yes. Gloria Yamas? Yes. Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Doug Fuller is yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned, um, and thank you for your participation in making this yet another successful Zoom meeting.